This is a recap video on matrices, just looking at some of the key skills involved with the topic. There are plenty of examples online already, videos of walkthrough of questions, so this is really just a summary to go over everything in a short space of time. Firstly, multiplying matrices. Uh, multiplying by a scalar quantity is very straightforward. A uh, scalar quantity would be, for example, uh, just a number. It is just a number quantity. So if I had to multiply the matrix by 3, and I was multiplying this matrix, I would simply multiply every digit in the matrix by 3, so it becomes 3, 0, minus 12, 15, and that's multiplying by a scalar. Multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix by a 2 by 1 matrix, the 2 by, ma two by, two by 2 matrix has to come first, and that's because everything in everything in the first row has to be multiplied by something in the column of the second matrix. So the fact that there are two things in the row means that I can multiply by this, these two things in this column. If I had it the other way around, for example 3, 5, trying to mul multiply that by 3, 4, minus 2, 1, I've only got one thing in the first row and I've got two things in the first column, so I can't multiply that. It's just not going to work. has to be this way around. So multiplying this, I multiply everything in the first row by everything in the column, and then everything in the second row by everything in the column, and add the results together. So I start 3 times 3 plus 4 times 5. And I've got in the bottom row, minus 2 times 3, plus 1 times 5. So that's 9 plus 20, minus 6 plus 5, equals 29 minus 1. Uh, I'll do another example of that. this time not writing out all the intermediate stages because you don't need to normally. So if we had 4, 2, minus 1, 3 times by 2, 1, I'd have 4 times 2, 8, plus 2, and down here I've got minus 1 times 2, that's minus 2, plus 3 times 1 is 3, so that equals 10 1. That's multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix by a 2 by 1 matrix. This is going to be useful in transformations later on. 2 by 2 matrix by a 2 by 2 matrix. Same sort of process, but it goes on for longer. Uh, I won't put the same digits in. Let's have 2 and 5, and we'll have in here 1 and 0. So this equals, we multiply forgot that I was doing a 2 by 2 matrix there, uh, 4 and 3. So we multiply everything in the first row by everything in the first column for the top digit, and then everything by the first row by everything in the second column for the top right digit. So this looks like 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 times 0 is 0. Second digit is 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4 times 3 is 12. So everything that's in the top row of the result has come from the top row of the first matrix. 2 and 5 have not been involved so far. Now that we've finished this, the top 3 and 4 won't be involved in this bottom row at all. So now we have 2 times 1 is 2, plus 5 times 0 is 0, and then we have 2 times 4 is 8, plus 5 times 3 is 15. And simplifying that, we've got 3, 24, 2, and 23. And that's the result of multiplying those two matrices together.
Another example with simpler values, let's have 1, 0, 3, 2 multiplied by 1, 0, 3, 4. That gives us 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 0 is 0, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12. Bottom row, 0 times 1 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, 2 times 4 is 8, which gives us 1, 15, 0, 8. That's multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix by a 2 by 2 matrix, and again useful for transformations of the unit square, which comes in later. Transformation is the effect that a matrix has, multiplying by a matrix has on a point. So for example, I might want to work out what happens to the point 1, 3 when it's multiplied by the matrix 4, 2, 3, 5. So if A is the point 1, 3, we might want to know what are the coordinates of A dash, the image of A. After the transformation four, two, three, five. The transformation goes in front because that's the way we multiply it. So the resulting point, the coordinates of A dash will be 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 5 times 3 is 15, so equals 10, 18, which means that A dash is at 10, 18. The identity matrix is a special transformation matrix because it has absolutely no effect, so in fact it doesn't transform the shape at all. This is one you need to know, the identity matrix, represented by I. Sometimes a question might just refer to I, say multiply by I, or prove that this is I. So multiply by I it has absolutely no effect, so if we multiply this on the matrix 2, 3, for example, we get 1 times 2 is 2, 0 times 3 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, 1 times 3 is 3, and the result is 2, 3. We can, so that hasn't happened, nothing has changed at all. The identity matrix has no effect when you multiply by it. We can have a look at what happens if we multiply by A four by four, uh, a two by two matrix as well. So four, three, two, eight, for example. We have one times four plus naught times eight, and then we've got one times three plus naught times eight. We've got naught times four plus one times two, and naught times three plus one times eight. Sorry, 0 times 3 is of course 0, which is why the identity matrix works. So there we get 4, 3, 2, 8, exactly the same as we started with. So this has no effect to the identity matrix. Going on to transformation to the unit square. It's called a unit square because it's a square that is one unit in every direction. So the coordinates of the lower corner here are 1, 0. The furthest corner here is 1, 1 and 0, 1. We can use this unit square to identify a matrix given to us um, as a transformation that we would recognize. For example, it might be a rotation of 90, which would be 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Assume that the rotation is anti-clockwise unless told otherwise. 
might be a rotation of 180 or 270 so quarter, half or three quarters turn around the origin it will always be around the origin it might be a reflection in one of the axes or it might be an enlargement we don't have to look at translations so our transformation matrices come in the form they will look generally very similar to the identity matrix so you might for example get 1 0 0 minus 1 and you might be asked to work out what transformation effect this will have this matrix and we can do that by looking at the two key points A and C and what happens to them so A is the point 1 0 and will be represented in vector form as 1 0 like that and C is 0 1 the result of this transformation tells us the new positions of A and C so this is what we look at for the new position of A and as we can see it's exactly the same A hasn't moved here however C the new position of C has got C as 0 minus 1 instead of 0 1 which means that this is now down here that's the new point of C C dash if that's happened the only way that that can be there while A stays in the same place is after it's been reflected in the x-axis which tells us that this matrix is the matrix for a reflection in the x-axis so 1 0 0 minus 1 reflection in the x-axis another example of that would be I can leave those rings I suppose I'll remove this uh, C dash point so another question might be what transformation occurs using the matrix one one is that going to happen? no it's not going to happen using the matrix uh, minus 1 0 0 minus 1 uh, and again we look at so A used to be at 1 0 and is now at minus 1 0 so A is moved over here that's A dash C used to be at 0 1 or 0 1 on here and is now at 0 minus 1 so this is the new coordinate for C, new position for C and we look what has happened between there this square and the square that now has corners A and C in that position just by looking at the square you might judge that that's a reflection in the line y equals minus x however looking at the coordinates of A and where A is moved to and where C is moved to we can see that this has actually been a rotation A has had to be rotated 180 degrees C has also been rotated 180 degrees so this represents rotation of 180 degrees about the origin you can always use this method to work out any kind of 
well, any of the transformations you'll be looking at in the exam that you'd be expected to recognize. Key point is to remember that because we write them as vectors from zero, it's this bit that represents point A and that bit that represents point C, not one zero, zero minus one. We don't look at the rows, we look just at the columns for using this method. Of course, an enlargement will have numbers bigger than one, so that represents an enlargement of four, scale factor four. And looking again at that, the details of that, point A10 is replaced by point A40, so four times bigger over here, and point C is instead of being 0, 1 is 0, 4, so all the way up there, and you can now got a square that's been enlarged by a scale factor of 4. And one final key rule, if you've got two transformations happening, so if you've got a point, for example, 3, 2, and it's being transformed by A, followed by a transformation B, the first transformation is the one that you put right next to the original point, because the second transformation is going to be applied to the first transformation. So if you want to know, for example, the transformation matrix of 1, 3, 2, 1, followed by 4, 5, 3, 2, you would want to say that 1, 3, 2, 1 is happening first, and therefore it would go closer to the number. And this is being applied to the result of that transformation, therefore we want to multiply it afterwards. So we put it there and we multiply it in this order. So then we get 4 plus 5 times 2 is 10, and then we've got 5 times 3 is 15, oops, sorry, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 5 times 1 is 5, it's getting very messy now, uh, 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 6, 2 times 1 is 2. So the result of both of those matrices, transform matrix transformations, is 14, 17, 7, 8. That's the answer for that. There are plenty of other videos online giving example questions of matrix, um, examples of matrix exam questions. So they're definitely worth looking at, but this has just been an overview of the basic skills involved. A key aspect is simultaneous equations, so always expect simultaneous equations to come up with these questions, particularly when you're trying to identify what a matrix is.